Good afternoon and welcome along to this Community Elements show. Now I'm delighted that we have Brian in today. Hooray! Hello, Brian. Also. <laughs> yeah. It's a great day out there and Brian has graced us with his presence and he's looking particularly bright and colourful today. Oh, thank you very much. Anyway, Brian, what have we got uh, as new stories for today? First of all, thousands of creative youngsters from the North East are raising spirits during the coronavirus pandemic with the power of the paintbrush. Children and their parents from across the region have joined online rainbow groups and have displayed colourful artwork in their front windows in a bid to boost morale of passing emergency service workers. The Clever Crafts are also keeping youngsters occupied while off school and parents are challenging them to see how many rainbow designs they can spot out on walks. Rainbow groups have sprung up online in recent days in Bridge of Dawn, Elric, Peterhead, Meldrum and others with hundreds of families signing up to each group and those helping uh, organise their groups say that they have plenty of plans to keep children occupied and emergency services smiling in the coming weeks. Emma Benzie of Meldrum said the plan is to agree a different theme each week so all the children draw the same thing and display it in their windows. We are thinking that one week could be a challenge to draw a positive message for emergency service workers so they know we're all behind them. The idea came from parents in Italy and USA. Emma, a mum of two, added, It's been so popular. We have had more than 300 people join our group called Look for Rainbows, Meldrum and Surrounding Areas since Saturday. The kids love it. Christina Daniel, who lives in Elric, and her five-year-old son, Elijah, have also been busy brightening up their neighbourhood by creating rainbow pictures and displaying them in windows. With her son bored at home and missing her friends, Christina decided it would be a good project and made a Facebook page called Rainbow Trail West Hill and Elric. While out on walks, Elijah can hunt for the coloured drawings at homes and nearby streets. Christina said, we made a rainbow out of paint and stuck it on our window so people can see it when they pass. Elijah wanted to go and hunt for more on Friday and was very disappointed when he couldn't find any. I decided to raise awareness about this and made a private Facebook group for Elric and West Hill, which has grown massively since. More than 650 people have joined the group, including isolated elderly people. Christina said, it is a nice, happy and cheerful story considering all the things happening at the moment. West Hill and District Councillor Iris Waltker also got involved in her rainbow trail, putting one in her window. Fellow resident and mum of two, Pan Chin, said, it's a great way of bringing hope, joy, smiles and love to every single age group. Another Facebook group created in the Buchan Corner is called Peterhead Follow the Rainbow. Member and mum of one, Rebecca Matheson, said, It's lovely to see so many people involved. An Aberdeen charity is marking 150 years of helping the city's most vulnerable people. The VSA was founded as the Association for Improving the Condition of the poor in March in 1870. Since then, it has grown to provide social care for thousands of children and adults with additional support or mental health needs. The charity was set up with the aim of improving the lives of the worst off families in the city by providing the best of care and supporting individuals and communities to fulfil their potential. And VSA which now operates 47 sites across Aberdeen and employs more than 600 people, is still delivering on many of its original promises a century and a half later. Chief Executive Kenneth Simpson said, This year is about recognising our past, but also looking at the foundations we can lay for the future generations to come. 
It's hugely exciting and it's a major milestone to have been around for this length of time. We are very proud to have had a real impact on our local community. There are you know, not many organisations our size which could still be called local charities. A lot of the reason we are still here 150 years on is down to the generosity of the local people. People can see VSA invests in the community it is a part of. Among the VSA's initiatives is the new £3.2 million Aberdeldi unit, a residential centre for those with mental health problems, which is currently under construction. Kenneth said, we're changing lives by providing the building. There has been a fantastic level of support for the project from the community. The charity provides services for older people, offering care at home services, activity centres and weekend daycare. The social care charity offers a respite service to support unpaid and informal carers too, helping nearly 11,000 carers in the city last year. A number of events are planned to celebrate the anniversary, a civic reception and the charity's Sing 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 event at the end of March have been postponed due to the coronavirus outbreak. However, the events are set to be rescheduled for later in the year. Kenneth added, we are hugely excited. We have got the opportunity to thank the people of Aberdeen for their support. We are very appreciative of all the support we get from the community. When BSA was founded in 1870, the charity welcomed Queen Victoria as its patron. Since then, five monarchs have filled the role, and the latest, Queen Elizabeth II, has written to the charity to congratulate it on reaching the milestone anniversary. She wrote, I was pleased to be reminded of the care, support and services offered by the organisation to vulnerable children and adults living in Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire. I send my best wishes to all concerned for an enjoyable, memorable and successful year, marking this significant milestone in the history of VSA. The impact of the charity over its 150-year history was praised by Aberdeen Central MSP Kevin Stewart. He said, it's amazing VSA has been at the heart of delivering care to our city's most poor and vulnerable people for this length of time. I hope they are able to carry on their great work for many more years to come. We have a scripture text today taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, which says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I think that's a very important text in that uh, there are so many troubles at this time that we're going through and people need to be prepared in case things go wrong, get themselves right with the Lord. Definitely. Crucial. Excellent, Brian. Thank you very much. It, that provides extra focus. And uh, I thought the story that really spoke out to me was the story about the VSA Voluntary Services Aberdeen. And I think that what they are doing, they continue to do even more necessary now than ever, for, ever before. Uh, they're, they're helping to coordinate people who would like to help in the community and putting them right where they are needed. And I know that VSA do a great job. Uh, they continue to do a great job and they should be really thanked and, and uh, highlighted for that great work. I mean, to say that they've done a fantastic job is an understatement, I mm -hmm. believe, because the evidence is right there in front of us. Uh, so, 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 so many people helped and encouraged and really kept alive. I think it's a brilliant story and uh, you know when we come to uh, picking out favourites, believe me this will be included. I'm sure it will be, yes. Um, so I should expect to see that in Brian's good uh, news top 10. Oh, <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt about that. Good. Right, well the next story, the first story that you covered was the uh, uh, putting of pictures in windows uh, to honour those who were and are 
there's her healthcare workers, key workers, and, and that's a you know very good thing to do to be getting the children focused on that and, and getting them working and focus on something during times when they can't really go out and play with their friends. Yeah. I mean, it was done specifically for services and that, but I think everybody is benefiting from seeing them, you know, because the rainbow itself is a lovely sight, you know, when you see one. Yeah. You, know, you, you concentrate on it and uh, enjoy it. Uh, it's not a scary thing. So... The children are encouraging not just the, the service people, but everybody that sees them. Mm. So they all deserve to be praised uh, mightily for what they are doing. Yeah. The children, yes, and certainly the healthcare workers. Have you been going out and about and clapping the healthcare workers at 8 o'clock, which we're recording this and now on a Thursday, and in 1 hour 40 minutes... It'll be time to go out and clap the healthcare workers. They deserve it immensely, don't they? But it's not just the healthcare workers, it's also the key workers. Uh -huh. Those who are key workers. But we shouldn't just even forget also those workers who are the delivery drivers, who are those who are on the road day in, day out, and they scarce get recognition mm. for all the work they do. So they need to have the recognition too. Um, and I really think that they should have the recognition. Very much so. So all these uh, things are, are for them too. Brian, can I thank you very much? Oh, I'm delighted to do it. I'm delighted to be back again. Yeah, I'm delighted to have you back because I missed you. We had to go and put out, uh, last week we did put out a Brian's Good News, but it was what was Brian's uh, Good News at this time last year? <laughs> I'm trying to even remember what it was actually <laughs> a week has gone by um, but uh, I can guarantee it would have been good yes, yes. always Ooh, good hallelujah. always good news <laughs> always good news from Brian hallelujah. anyway we will have another bout of good news because Brian you've been telling me that you haven't uh, actually even during this interim lull I think you said you had about 13 or 14 stories that you have collated well, slightly more than that. Uh, I haven't counted them recently, but uh, they are all worthwhile stories. So uh, we've got plenty to be going on with. Plenty to be going on with. So we'll we'll have a uh, a super a super sized Brian was good news community element show. Uh, I'm sure in the next uh, few weeks or so. Uh, when good news will be very much the top of the list, as indeed it needs to be right at the moment, because uh, people need to be encouraged. <clears throat> now, thinking about the artwork, so uh, quickly, Brian, uh, while Helen and I have been out on, on regular walks, we try and vary where we go for our walk, and we've actually been seeing uh, people been putting out little works of art by, uh, by trees and things. Uh, sometimes uh, you might see fairy doors and things like that appearing on trees. I'm not talking about them, but I'm talking about other little works of art that people have been actually placing in the countryside uh, as part of a as part of a, like a little trail that you can go around. And as you go around this trail, you can see these little works of art. Um, Excellent, because all of these are very uplifting, aren't they? And people will have taken their time to actually create these. Yes. Uh, we we have actually taken pictures of them, uh, some of the pictures of them anyway. So we maybe put them up on the uh, Gospel for Grampian Facebook page. Very good. Anyway, this particular program is the Community Elements program. And uh, we'll be having a look next uh, in this program at what services are offered at this time in this particular time of the restrictions to people where we had a little look last week at uh, uh, Social Bite and uh, I had a look also at the Cyrenians and uh, also at uh, CFINE, Community Food Initiatives, but we'll also have a little look at some of the other charities as well. That's all coming up in this show and this show goes out again Saturday and Sunday at 12 p.m. and also uh, during the week as individual community elements. We have a scripture text today taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 which says 
Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Thank you, Brian. For the second of the community elements, we're considering the great work undertaken by Instant Neighbour, instantneighbour.co.uk. Because of the COVID-19 crisis at present, the only thing that Instant Neighbour concentrating on, and they wanted us to mention this, is the food bank. Now let's first of all think of why people might come to a food bank. Well, late benefit payments, waiting for the first payment under new benefit claims, for stopped benefit payments due to sanctions imposed, waiting for first wage from new employer and increased heating costs during the winter months. These are just some of the reasons why clients might actually go to Instant Neighbour and Instant Neighbour actually serve the north area of Aberdeen. Now the food bank is situated in the St Macca Drive premises and is open Monday to Friday 10am to 12pm and 2pm to 4pm. Now they always have a great need of food and they're always grateful for people giving to the food bank. They usually need UHT or long life milk tinned soup, tinned meat and fish, tinned vegetables, rice and pasta, jar sauces, cereals, tinned food, biscuits and snack bars, tea bags and instant coffee, sugar, diluting juice, dog and cat food and basic toiletries. These are some of the things that they actually need. And I'll give you those uh, details again of the opening times of the food bank. The registered office is at 5 St Macca Drive, Aberdeen, AB 243YJ. And just to go over the times of the opening once again of the food bank, and you can actually pick up extra information on the instantneighbour.co.uk website, yes, but also the Facebook page as well, where I'm told uh, this is actually kept more up to date than the website due to the fact that they have skeleton staff. So thanks very much to Evan for giving me that information. Now Food Bank, I believe, yes, is open from uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. And as I say, they're always grateful for that little bit of extra help any food bank donations can also be dropped off at Peter Kuta Parish Church as well. Instant neighbour donations drop offs are Peter Kuta Parish Church Monday 27th of April, Monday 4th of May, and Monday 11th of May. Monday 27th of April, 4th of May, and 11th of May, 11 am to 12 pm. So those are the times when you can go. There's also Every Wednesday there will be a chance to donate food for at Ferry Hill Parish Church. Non-perishable food, items and toiletries can be dropped off between 1pm and 2pm and between 7pm and 8pm. And uh, these items will be distributed to the vulnerable and housebound people at this difficult time. You should adhere to distancing instructions at all times. Uh, instant neighbour, very grateful for PayPal donations. So, uh, it's also uh, very grateful to Bureau Veritas Aberdeen for their generous donation. That's a bit of information for you about Instant Neighbour, which are based at 5 St Macca Drive, and that's where the food bank is open. Instant Neighbour are concentrating on their food bank rather than anything else at this time of the COVID-19 crisis. This is the Community Elements Show, and we're going to be finishing this part of the show with more good news, which has been sent in by Rachel Mackay. Thanks, Rachel. Two NHS workers who had their wedding cancelled due to coronavirus were left delighted after family and friends made an incredible wedding party TikTok video. Pharmacist Claire Higgins, 40, and GP Stuart Mayers, 47, were blown away by the effort made by their wedding guests from across the world. 
The couple, who have been together for four years, were due to get married at the iconic venue Gretna Green at the weekend. Creative bride-to-be Claire decided to bring everyone together for the party her guests should have had. Thanks for all your hard work, Claire and Stuart. Your wedding will be a belter when all this is over. A Scots costume designer swaps tutus for scrubs in support of NHS staff. A costume designer swapped tutus for scrubs to help create vital supplies for NHS workers. Hazel Blue, who was designed for countless theatre productions including the Scottish Ballet, has joined For the Love of Scrubs Scotland, aiming to make batches of scrubs for NHS staff. The project, founded by Mirka and Maja Jankowska of Mirka Bridal Couture in Kirkcaldy and Holly Baxter Weir of Fabric Bazaar, started after news of health workers lacking in personal protective equipment. These stories are from the Daily Record. And thanks very much to Rachel Mackay for that. She'll be back again next week with plenty more good news stories. And most certainly we'll have Brian back again next week with Brian's good news And I'll be back next week with uh, another look at another organisation, the SA, and how organisations around the north-east of Scotland are coping with COVID-19. Just to quickly let you know what else is happening on this station this weekend and today. At six o'clock tonight, you'll be able to hear a gospel of hope. And at 7pm, we're going to be praying in our power hour for the needs of the country, for the NHS, for the key workers, and praying around the world as nations are working together to make the best of this COVID-19 outbreak. You can hear this programme again between 12pm and 1pm, Saturday and Sunday, and as individual community elements during the week. But I'm saying bye-bye for now.